The Guardian News. Trump knew for weeks Michael Flynn misled over Russia contact. Donald Trump is facing mounting pressure to explain his ties with Russia after it emerged that he knew weeks ago his national security adviser had misled officials about secret communications with Russian officials but did not fire him. Retired General Michael Flynn was eventually forced to quit on Monday night after reports that he could be vulnerable to blackmail by Moscow. Democrats demanded an independent investigation into Flynn's phone calls with the Russian ambassador, what Trump knew about them and when. A senior Republican promised to examine the matter exhaustively, but others in the party were reticent. Sean Spicer, the White House press secretary, told reporters how the resignation happened the evolving and eroding level of trust as a result of this situation and a series of other questionable incidents is what led the president to ask General Flynn for his resignation. He added, there's nothing that the general did that was a violation of any sort. What this came down to was a matter of trust. Flynn stepped down after just 24 days when it emerged that he had discussed sanctions with the Russian ambassador to Washington, then misled Vice President Mike Pence and others about the conversations. White House officials were reeling from the scandal less than a month after Trump took office amid reports of disarray and dysfunction. They also faced questions over why it did not act more than two weeks ago when it was first warned by the Department of Justice that the retired general might be vulnerable to Russian blackmail. Nancy Pelosi, the House Minority Leader, called for a wide-ranging investigation. The truth and consequences of the Russia connection, the American people deserve to know the full extent of Russia's financial personal and political grip on President Trump and what that means for our national security, she said. Flynn's resignation is a reflection of the poor judgment of President Trump and demands answers to the grave questions over the president's involvement. By what authority did Flynn act and to whom did he report? Pelosi called on the FBI to accelerate its investigation of the Russian connection with the Trump administration and said Congress must call for a bipartisan, independent, outside commission to fully investigate Russia's influence on the administration and the election. The Democratic demand threw down the gauntlet to Republicans, who control the House and Senate but have an often challenging relationship with Trump. Roy Blunt, a Republican who chairs the Senate Intelligence Committee, pledged to investigate the Flynn issue exhaustively. I think everybody needs that investigation to happen, Blunt, a senator from Missouri, said on Tuesday in a local radio interview. And the Senate Intelligence Committee, has been given the principal responsibility to look into this and I think that we should look into it exhaustively so that at the end of this process, nobody wonders whether there was a stone left unturned, and shouldn't reach conclusions before you have the information that you need to have to make those conclusions. Blunt suggested his committee would soon call upon Flynn to testify before Congress. I would think that we should talk to General Flynn very soon and that should answer a lot of questions he said. What did he know? What did he do? And is there any reason to believe that anybody knew that and didn't take the kind of action they should have taken? Kellyanne Conway, a close aide to Trump, had claimed on Monday afternoon that Flynn continued to have the full confidence of the president. On Tuesday, she said Trump had supported him out of loyalty but that the situation reached a fever pitch and had become unsustainable. By night's end, Mike Flynn had decided it was best to resign, Conway told NBC's Today Show. He knew he'd become a lightning rod, and he made that decision. I think misleading the vice president really was the key here and when I spoke with the president this morning he asked me to speak on his behalf and to reiterate that Mike Flynn had resigned. 
he decided that he was in a situation that had become unsustainable for him and the president accepted that resignation. When asked why the White House did not move more quickly in response to the blackmail warning late last month from former Acting Attorney General Sally Yates, first reported by the Washington Post on Monday, Conway said only, as time wore on, obviously the situation became unsustainable. We're moving on. Yates was the former attorney general who was fired by Trump on January 30 after she told DOJ lawyers not to make legal arguments defending Trump's travel ban executive order. Flynn's departure deepened concerns over a chaotic start for the Trump White House and the National Security Council, NSC, in particular, as well as allegations of ties with Russia that continue to haunt the president. Republican John McCain, chairman of the Senate Armed Services Committee, described it as a troubling indication of the dysfunction of the current national security apparatus in a complex global environment. McCain added, General Flynn's resignation also raises further questions about the Trump administration's intentions toward Vladimir Putin's Russia, including statements by the president suggesting moral equivalence between the United States and Russia despite its invasion of Ukraine annexation of Crimea, threats to our NATO allies, and attempted interference in American elections. Democrats scented blood. Adrian Watson, National Press Secretary of the Democratic National Committee, said, Michael Flynn is gone, but the problem is not. We still have serious unanswered questions about the connections of Donald Trump his White House and his campaign to Russia. Watson called on Republicans to join with Democrats to support an independent, bipartisan 9-11 commission-style investigation to find out what Trump knew and when he knew it. The 9-11 commission interviewed hundreds of people to produce a detailed report on the September 11 terrorist attacks. Democratic Congressman John Conyers Jr. of Michigan and Elijah Cummings of Maryland, the ranking members of the Judiciary and Oversight Committees, called for a classified briefing for Congress regarding Flynn's actions. We were shocked and dismayed to learn this evening of reports that three weeks ago, U.S. law enforcement officials warned the White House counsel that General Flynn had provided false information to the public about his communications with the Russian government, but that the Trump administration apparently did nothing about it, the two said in a statement. That White House counsel, Don McGahn, was informed last month by Yates about the risk of Flynn being blackmailed, according to the Washington Post. McGahn would normally be expected to then inform the president, but it is unclear what actions he took. David Gergen, a political analyst and former advisor to four U.S. presidents, told CNN, it's unimaginable that the White House general counsel would sit on it and not tell anybody else in the White House. In every White House I've ever been in, this would go to the president like that. Intelligence agencies concluded that Russian computer hackers interfered in last year's presidential election with the intention of hurting Hillary Clinton, and therefore helping Trump. The property billionaire has repeatedly declined to criticize Putin. Ben Rhodes, a former deputy national security adviser to Barack Obama, drew attention to the resignation last year of Trump's campaign chairman. Paul Manafort, who also had links to Russia. He tweeted, When campaign chairman and NSA both resign over Russia ties there is more. Manafort and Flynn had nothing in common except Russia and Trump. Ben Cardin, ranking Democrat on the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, described Russia's election meddling as a political Pearl Harbor and said he had filed a bill to set up a 9-11 style commission to investigate it. First of all, it appears that Russia were using their normal MO, he said, 
they had information on General Flynn and they knew that he was compromised and intended to keep that in mind if they ever needed to put pressure on the Trump administration, that they had an avenue through General Flynn to perhaps affect decisions in our government. That's blackmail and bribery and things like that, which is how Russia operates. Now, is General Flynn the only person who's been compromised? I don't know. We don't know. We need to understand the risk factors to our country. We know that they knew about the concerns on General Flynn several weeks ago, prior to President Trump taking the oath of office, and yet it was 25 days before action was taken. That's of concern. Paul Ryan, the House Speaker and most senior Republican on Capitol Hill, said that Trump had made the right decision in seeking Flynn's resignation. You cannot have a national security adviser misleading the vice president and others, Ryan said at a press conference. As soon as this person lost the president's trust, the president asked for his resignation. It was the right thing to do. Aides to the White House have insisted Flynn was not asked to resign, but that he did so on his own. But Republican Jason Chaffetz, chairman of the House Oversight Committee, said he would not pursue an investigation into Flynn's contacts with Russia. That situation is taking care of itself, Chaffetz told reporters on Capitol Hill. I know that the House Intelligence Committee was looking into the hacking issue previously, so I think he did the right thing by stepping out. Chaffetz further added it was the purview of the Intelligence Committee, and not his panel, to investigate the matter further. The Republican-led House Oversight Committee did, however, investigate Hillary Clinton's handling of the 2012 Benghazi terrorist attack even as the Senate and House Intelligence Committees conducted their own inquiries. Devin Nunes, chairman of the House Intelligence Committee and a longtime ally of Flynn's, said he had no plans to investigate his communications with Russia, adding he was more concerned with the leaks surrounding the former National Security Advisor. Trump named retired LT Gen Keith Kellogg as the acting National Security Advisor. Kellogg had previously been appointed the NSC Chief of Staff and advised Trump during the campaign. Trump is also reportedly considering former CIA Director David Petraeus and Vice ADM Robert Harward, a Navy SEAL, for the post. The Kremlin had confirmed that Flynn was in contact with Kislyak but denied that they talked about lifting sanctions. On Tuesday, Konstantin Kosashev, chairman of the Foreign Affairs Committee at the upper chamber of the Russian parliament, said in a post on Facebook that firing a national security adviser for his contacts with Russia is not just paranoia but something even worse. Kosashev also expressed frustration at the Trump administration, either Trump hasn't found the necessary independence and he's been driven into a corner or Russophobia has permeated the new administration from top to bottom. The president broke his silence with a tweet that attempted to deflect attention, the real story here is why are there so many illegal leaks coming out of Washington? Will these leaks be happening as ideal on end. Korea, etc. Flynn was often an angry, outspoken warm-up act for Trump at his election campaign rallies. At last year's Republican National Convention in Cleveland he encouraged members to chant lock her up, in reference to Hillary Clinton. Among those reacting to the resignation on Monday was Philip Raines, who worked with Clinton when she was Secretary of State. Raines made reference to the Pete Saget conspiracy, which falsely accused Washington pizza shop Comet Ping Pong of being the center of a child sex ring involving leading Democrats.